if I was starting from scratch to homeschool in 2023, this is what I would do. I'll first decide on what I want to teach my child. Now, before you watch this video, I recommend you watch the other video, part one of this, which will be in the description box. Once you've done all the things that are in part one, now we are ready to start. So now you say, Tanda, so what do I do now? I've done everything you told me to do, then what do I do? Guys, I'll be sharing my personal experience. I'm a mom with six kids, they're eight years and below, so I'll be sharing my experience with being homeschooling full time for how many? For three years now. Um, wow time flies so i've been homeschooling for three years and this is what i would do firstly i would decide on what i want to teach my child this is what i actually did even at the beginning deciding on what i want to teach my child there can be a number of subjects at schools um you know a lot of them actually and you might be overwhelmed especially when you're getting started um if you want to do all those subjects what worked for us was to decide what we want to teach our children so this decision you need to take per child because it depends like i have six kids my I, my eight year old I cannot teach them the same thing as what I'll be teaching my two-year-old. So you also need to make that a very individual kind of decision as per child, really. This is what I want to teach this child. This is what I want to teach that child. And my guide, it has always been reading, writing, and maths, you know, and you're still doing that, reading, writing, and maths. And you can add other things on top of that, but just knowing that those are your core subjects. And if maybe you didn't do art that week, <laughs> it's still fine as long as you were able to do the core subjects that's that's my personal guide so as i'm talking about reading and writing you will soon need to decide on what languages you know when the child is still young it's still okay but as your children grow older you might want to add another language like maybe if you're using uh whatever your mother tongue is your home language you maybe want to add english um or maybe you want to use english as their home language and then add another language or add two or three we are currently doing three languages um with the older kids and it's been going it's been like this <laughs> but it's okay because at least we are moving forward so they are currently doing suzulu english and africans okay i need to take my baby's crying just hold on my baby wants to film with me <laughs> say hi baby Okay, my baby is feeding, he's content, so I can continue filming at least. Let me continue. Oh, he's so hungry. <laughs> so I was saying, um, my older kids are doing three languages this year. They're doing English, uh, it's doing Afrikaans. And I can go into detail how we were able to do that. Um, it wasn't easy and it has not always been the case. Uh, there was a time when they were just doing one language, which was just English. And then we've introduced um, Afrikaans and Sisu. If you guys are interested in seeing how we do that, comment, comment. <laughs> Just leave a comment down below, then I'll know that uh, you guys want to see a video about that. Then I can show you how I simplified it for them because I'm all about simplicity. That's that's just my motto. Like I just keep things simple. Another thing, which is the second point I want to move on is um, time, time to homeschool. Um, you will understand if you watch the part one. Um, when I come to this point with it, it's important to decide on the time for us for our family um, When we're making a decision to homeschool. I was working Ugh, Worse guys. I was working. I was pregnant with my fifth born and <laughs> It was just crazy. I also didn't have a helper. So it was a very rough crazy um, season but fortunately um, Soon after we made that decision the country was on lockdown so we were at home for a few months before we went back to work. So just be practical about your time on when you want to homeschool. In my case, uh, since I have a large family, well, that's if you consider six kids as large family. I don't. <laughs> In my case, uh, with a relatively large family, I group my kids. I have six kids. They're eight years and below. I group them. The three older one. They're the older kids and then the three younger ones are like the younger kids um my older kids call them babies <laughs> so this does help um in our homeschool as well because i know that i need to group them um in order to teach them and also just to pay attention to them because if i were to homeschool all of them everything together i don't think i'll have capacity special since i work you know so i don't think it will be possible so grouping them is helping me to better manage my kids so like I said, I have two groups, my older kids, my I have twins who are eight years old. So my eight year olds and my six year old, they're the older group. And then my four year old, my two year old, 
and then the baby um, is like my second group but actually the baby is not in any of the groups because sometimes the baby is with the older groups and sometimes the baby is with the younger group it just depends on when the baby is awake like right now the baby is here with me filming <laughs> and the way we do things is we homeschool first things in the morning like we have to do that because I work and sometimes I work away from home so we need to have a structure of how we do things and you know guys kids excel when you have a routine like kids excel when they know what to expect so i maximize on that i'm a big fan of routines i don't get bored of routines and i know that kids do excel when there is a structure in place so we homeschool first thing in the morning that's the time we've decided to do it and sometimes i do check uh, late like when i come back maybe from work check their work check what they did and also prepare some things maybe for the next day and so on i can also do a video about it i've been meaning to do that actually i've been meaning to film my morning routine um, for you guys but also for myself because i was just looking how much things um, have changed in my life i'm like oh i wish i filmed that oh, i wish i filmed that so hopefully i'll be able to film that uh, morning routine and then once i've done that i'll leave the link of that video in this in the description box so i'll basically be showing you guys how we do everything in the morning before i leave for work i'm hoping to be able to film my morning routine soon but it's it, I, uh, the morning hours are very uh, critical in our family and time management is everything guys time management is everything so it's not easy for me to film during that time it's not even easy for me to be on the phone or anything like that during that time but i will uh, film for you guys and also for myself like i said So that point is to decide on a place to homeschool um where are we going to homeschool we're going to homeschool in the car we're going to homeschool at the library we're going to homeschool at home and that does change and it depends on the plan that you have for the week but at least if you know that most of the majority of your homeschool will be happening here at home under the tree or in that table or in that couch or in that um mat and so on it does help a lot it sounds simple it sounds really obvious but it's not um, it's not a small decision. It's it's important that you take that decision that okay This is where we're going to homeschool and you're not just doing this for yourself But you're also doing it for your kids like I'm saying it's important to have systems You know when you have kids it's important to have routines and to have systems. So when they know that this is where they learn It will help you a lot when I say have a place for homeschool, please don't go and build a new building a homeschool uh, room or a homeschool building <laughs> or maybe go hire um, a flat saying that's where we're going to homeschool please don't rush don't do that um, just start with what you have please <laughs> this is what I did and using what I have I can identify things that I need you know then you'll see that oh if only we can have that oh we don't actually need this oh we need that so I think it's always best to start with what you have and then you can build from that don't go don't go building buildings guys okay just use your home <laughs> it's homeschool <laughs> so please use your, your home use what you currently have when you started homeschooling we used our living room and we've tried different places um, at some point i tried my kids bedroom and i soon saw that it wasn't a good idea to use their bedroom for homeschool so right now we prefer to leave their bedroom for for whatever they want to do in there if they want to play in there whatever that they decide to do in their bedroom but school so this is my advice, if you can, to avoid using their bedroom. Once you've done all these things, I feel it's only then you can go shopping for a curriculum for your core subjects. Um, start with the core subjects. That's what I normally do, starting with the core subjects. And then I see what you will need maybe for the electives so the additional subjects um then you can just decide if you really need a curriculum for that or it's something that you you will be using a free curriculum or something that you'll be using unit studies and so forth don't forget to check out part one of this uh, series and if you want to see how to choose curriculum or to see more on how i will do things if i was starting afresh please leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you'll see future videos yes all right, it's time to say bye, baby. Bye. Say bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Say subscribe. Subscribe to Mommy's channel. Bye, guys.